Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Today is April 22, 2022. Uh, happy Sabbath day, I'm supposing. Well, at least when it's sundown, it is. If the calendar can be trusted. Uh, we've been told so many lies in this world, I, I don't even know what's true anymore. Hardly. Outside of the Bible, anyways. So, outside of the King James Bible, I don't know what's true anymore. I really, it's things that you've been taught all your life, you find out was a bunch of lies. So, and... The devil's kids, they can't help it. They're born of the father of lies, so they're it's second nature to them. Well, actually, it's their first nature, but I digress. Uh, this Bible study is going to be on forgive, forgiven, and forgiveness. Now, uh, there's I can think of three different types of forgiveness or being forgiven. There is the things that we are forgiven by the Lord, by our trusting in Christ, and Him paying the penalty for our sin debt. And then there's our forgiving those that have wronged us, either real or imagined. And then there's the false forgiveness that those will tell you that we're supposed to forgive others that have sinned against the Lord. The best example of that would be uh, a, somebody that's a uh, Luciferian that would uh, kill and sacrifice children to the devil. That is something only the Lord can forgive. We cannot forgive those that sin against the Lord. That is not biblical in any way, shape, or form. So keep that in mind. So basically, this study is going to be, the emphasis is going to be on those that offend us. Do you know that not forgiving people for things that they've done against us can keep us out of heaven, out of the kingdom? Uh, I'll tell you what, it's not easy to forgive. It's not easy. Especially what happened to me in Arkansas. But I'm going to let the Lord deal with it. So let's take a look. All right, let's turn to the book of Matthew. We're going to take a look at chapter 6. And um, yeah, here you go. Verse 1. Take heed, which means listen, pay attention. Take heed that you do not your alms before men. What is alms? It's uh, giving of charity. You know, you see a, somebody homeless, supposedly, with a sign, you know, we'll work for food, and you hand them five bucks, well, that's giving alms. Um, or somebody that's disabled. Take heed that you do not your alms before men, to be seen of them. Hmm. Hmm. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites in the synagogues and in the streets. Hmm. Where are those, where are those hypocrites at? Oh, yeah. 
you know, they would, uh, from what I understand from history, they would hire somebody to, to blow a, a, a horn. So when everybody's looking at them, oh, here I'm giving uh, alms to the poor here. You know, to be seen of men. And then everybody's going, oh, that that guy, that rabbi, he's a great guy. Look, he's giving those poor people, uh, you know, some help. Do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the, in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Now, obviously, that's a figure of speech, right? That thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father, God the Father in heaven, and thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues, doesn't sound like Jesus has a very high opinion of synagogues, does it? No. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. And today you could substitute the word church for synagogue, and you wouldn't be very far off about hypocrites but thou when thou prayest enter into thy closet and when thou hast shut thy door pray to thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly but when ye pray use not vain repetitions um, would praying the rosary be considered vain repetitions I don't know if you know what the rosary is, but, uh, you know, look it up. Pause and then look it up. Um, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be ye not therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye need, have need of before ye ask him. Yeah. Do you need to ask the Lord for food on days you're not fasting? Hint, hint. And I'm as guilty as anybody. Boy, the flesh hates fasting. Verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Okay, Jesus is going to teach us how to pray. All right, so after this manner, therefore pray ye, Jesus speaking, Our Father, which art in heaven. Compare that to uh, their Father, which is not in heaven. You know, the one that was cast down in into the earth. Revelation 12 you know, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye shall do. You know, Revelation, no, I'm sorry, uh, John 8, 44. Oh, yeah. There's two fathers, the father above and the father below. Which one do we want to serve? Our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yeah, hallowed be thy name. I'm not even sure I I'm not even sure what what that name is. I've heard all kinds of, you know, the sacred namers and Hebrew roots people be happy to tell you what it is, but I'm not sure they have it right. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And that's coming, people. Revelation chapter 20, 21, and 22. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Okay. Is it talking about just wheat bread? You know, rye bread, barley bread? Or is there more to it than that? How about a quick look at Luke chapter 4? Now, Jesus had just been uh, baptized of John the Baptist. And the Holy Spirit, like a dove, had descended upon him. You know, that would have been an incredible uh, sight to see. So, this is where it takes on, uh, takes on uh, where it starts from there. Luke 4, verse 1, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. He was fasting for forty days. Can you imagine that? And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Hmm. Give us this day our daily bread, right? And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written. Very important. When you get attacked, it is written. Scriptures. Right out of the Bible. It is written. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And where can you find that in the English language? I think the King James, but hey, that's just one guy's opinion. Didn't Jesus say he was the bread of life? John chapter 6. Oh, yeah. Jesus is that bread. Jesus is the word. The word of God. Verse 5, And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. That would have been an interesting show there. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. I have a feeling that the kingdoms of this world and their glory pales in absolutely pales in comparison to what Christ saw when he was in heaven and the new Jerusalem. Verse 8, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, you know, what's sad is Satan knows the Bible better than probably the great majority of churchgoers. Maybe better than all of us. Uh, who knows? He's had thousands of years to, to examine them. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. So there you go. 
So we're supposed to ask for our daily bread. But man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And that's kind of paraphrasing, so. Verse 12, here's the punchline. Lord's Prayer. And forgive us our debts. Uh, is it talking about our credit card bills, our mortgage, our car payments? No, that's not what it's talking about when it says debts. It's talking about our transgressions, our sins. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Yes, Lord, please forgive us for the things we have done to wrong you. As we are supposed to forgive those that wrong us. Very important. Very important. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the uh, from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Your second punchline. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, if we forgive those that do bad things to us, you know, what is trespassing? Well, if you're trespassing on somebody's land, you are in a place where you're not supposed to be. You're not supposed to be there. Well, same thing with, you know, when uh, the Lord, when we're trespassing against the Lord, we're someplace we're not supposed to be. Guys, we're not supposed to be in a strip club or a whorehouse. Not supposed to be there. I remember when I was in Germany in the army, uh, I was hanging out with one of my buddies. He took me down by the red light district where all the girls are sitting in the windows. Uh, sort of like when you're window shopping at a mall and you, you're walking down the mall and all these stores are with the glass window and you, uh, all the girls were sitting there with their not much on, I'm telling you, not much. I didn't partake, but I did think about it. Of course, I didn't make much money then, but uh, it was legal. They called it the red light district. Uh, I was uh, I was in a place where I shouldn't have been. Of course, I didn't believe back then. I did absolutely did not believe back then. Wish I hadn't have fallen away when I was young, but I did. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Do you know if we don't forgive those that do things against us, God the Father won't forgive us either. You know, and then there's people that say, well, all you got to do is believe in Jesus. Just believe in Jesus. You don't have to do anything. Just believe in Jesus. Read James chapter 2. I'm serious. Pause this video and read James chapter 2. The devils believe in Jesus. Are they saved? No. No. Because their works are evil. You know, it's... And, and the Bible, we're recorded to do good works. Good works always follow salvation. You don't do good works to earn salvation. You know, an apple tree doesn't produce apples to prove that it's an apple tree. The apple tree produces apples because it is an apple tree. And Christians will do good works because that's what they are. The Holy Spirit will lead you to do these type of things. You know, John the Baptist told the Pharisees to, to do works meet for repentance. Works. And there's a whole groups of people tell you doing good works 
Oh, you're trying to earn your salvation. And they call it Lordship Salvation. You know, if those people do make it into the kingdom, they're going to be pretty low on the totem pole, I guess you could say. Uh, you could say that. I don't know. If they even make it in. James says, show me thy faith. Yeah, let me look it up real quick. I don't want to be misquoting. It is written. James chapter 2, verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, can you imagine living in the winter and you got a brother or sister, whether in the family or uh, in the faith, and they were robbed, and they took everything from them, including all their clothes, and they have no money, they have nothing. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, uh, can you imagine somebody in the winter not having any clothes? Verse 16. And one of you say unto them, O oh, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. That sounds like exactly what you would hear at a Billy Goat Graham church. Oh, you don't have any food you don't, you're, and you don't have any clothes and it's winter outside? Well, may you depart in peace and be warmed and filled. But, you know, they're not going to give you nothing. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful, to the body, what does it profit? You know, what good are you? You got five jackets hanging in your closet and three of them you haven't used in years and you won't take a warm coat and give it to somebody? Really? You know, there's a, a, a perhaps you've heard of Red Lobster. I was talking to somebody that worked for Red Lobster, they said, and the food that they can't sell the next day, perfectly good food, I heard they throw it in the garbage. Rather than give it to the employees, which they charge them for meals, I've heard, instead of giving it to the employees to eat, they throw it in the garbage. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? And one of you saying to them, Depart in peace, be warm and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? And I've had people say, well, even believing is a work. Ugh. You know, the Lord does deceive people. So, Back to Matthew 6, 14. And if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So if you don't forgive those that trespass against you, God the Father is not going to forgive you either. Now, does that mean that somebody molests your one of your kids? You forgive them and give them another chance to do the same? Uh, no, no, no. 
that does not apply to capital crimes. Okay? The Bible tells you what to do to those people that commit capital crimes. Like murder. That's a capital crime. You don't say, well, you know, God says to forgive, so I'm going to let you go out and kill somebody else. No, that's not what we're talking about. Somebody lies about you or somebody steals from you or accuses you of stealing when you didn't do it. We're supposed to forgive them. But a capital crime, that's not a for No, but we don't follow the Bible laws on capital crimes. I could list them, but uh, this video would probably be banned on you know who uh, tube. So there's there's a difference between what we're supposed to forgive, okay, and and letting somebody harm your children. Uh, that, that is not what we're talking about here. We're talking about somebody that steals something from you or. They borrow money from you and promise to pay and they don't do it. That's the kind of things we're supposed to forgive. You know. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, you know, not eating, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. You know, one of the... Um, there's, oh, I can't remember the name of the book. I think it was Fasting Can Save Your Life. Uh, let me look that up. Uh, Fasting Can Save Your Life uh, by Herbert Shelton, S-H-E-L-T-O-N. I read that book in the 80s uh, before I came back to the Lord, and uh, it was... A lot of health benefits to fasting. You know, it's one of the few ways to get rid of uh, poisons and toxins in your body. Uh, matter of fact, when your body gets uh, a chemical that it doesn't know what to do with, it'll store it in the fat. Uh, from what I understand, that's why a lot of women get breast cancer because, um, well, their breast cells are uh, breasts are basically a lot of fat. Uh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to elaborate on that. So, uh, all I know is when you fast, it cleanses the body. And uh, believe me, I'm no. It's been a long time since I've done what I need to do. But there is a spiritual aspect to it too there's a health aspect and then there's a spiritual aspect and god will bless you for that so uh let's see verse 18 that thou appear not unto men to fast but unto thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Yeah. Yeah, you can get a bunch of gold and silver, but thieves can steal it all, right? But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If your treasure is gold and silver, that's where your heart is. What did God say about, uh, what did Jesus say about uh, rich men getting into the heaven? About how it would be easier to thread a camel through the eye of a needle? 
And of course, your modern Bible scholars will tell you, oh, the eye of the needle, that was a, a low gate going into Jerusalem that when people were on their camel, they'd, they'd have to bow their head just a little bit to, to get through that gate. And they call that the eye of the needle. So, you know, those rich men, they're, they're going to get in there. They just got to bow a little bit. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so at all. No. But that's just one guy's opinion. So. All right. In uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. Then came Peter to him, Peter comes to Jesus, and said, Lord, how oft, or how often, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times, Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. And if you don't know what seventy times seven is, it's uh, 490 times. And if you're counting, you miss the point. Oh, he, he sinned against me 466 times. You know, uh, no, no, that's, you know, no. You miss the point. That's, <laughs> yeah. 490 times is just a figure of speech so all right let's read uh, Matthew 18 23 the next verse therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants now this is a parable you know who's the the kingdom of heaven is like a king. Who's the king? God the Father is the king, right? And he's going to take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Now, for what I understand, a talent is, uh, I think it's 70 pounds approximately, or about 32 kilograms. 30 kilograms, somewhere around there. Uh, if you're talking silver, you know, even if you were talking silver, this is a an insane amount of money. This this guy owed the king a, a lot. Verse 25, but for as much as he had not to pay, but his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. See, back in the old days, they could sell you into slavery for not paying your debts. Matter of fact, the um, United States even wrote it into the Constitution not to have debtor's prisons. Do you know that Australia was originally a debtor's prison for uh, people in England that couldn't pay their debts? You know, you hear, oh, that was a penal colony. Yeah, they were in debtor's prison. They borrowed money let's say to expand their farm, bad weather, no crops, and they basically got their farm foreclosed on and they were thrown into prison for not paying their debts. Uh, but they get around that now. They just, uh, the bank uh, hauls you into court for payment. And then when you don't pay, the, the judge just says, oh, contempt of court. But so technically, it's not a debtor's prison. It's just, uh, yeah, contempt of court. Either way, you, you go to prison or jail. Um, yeah. So this guy couldn't, couldn't pay a fortune. And the king commanded that he be sold, his wife, children, and everything he had to be, be able to make the payment. Verse 27, then the Lord of that, sir, uh, oh, I'm sorry, verse 26, the servant therefore fell down and worshiped him saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. 
Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Do we owe the Lord a lot more than 10,000 talents? Oh, yeah, I think so. A lot more. And the Lord forgive, he forgave him the debt. Verse 28. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. Uh, you're talking basically a hundred days wages of an unskilled laborer. Here it is, this guy uh, had owed the, the king a fortune, an absolute fortune. I don't even know what 10,000 talents of silver would be, but it's got to be probably millions of dollars. Let me, let me look that up real quick. Yeah, according to my calculations, uh, the guy that with the talents is about $17 million. So that's got to be probably 12 million pounds or euros. You know, you're talking a, a fortune. And this guy owes 100 pence, which is a, a fraction of what this other guy owes. A fraction. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. Pay me now, buddy. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Uh, how do you pay somebody when you're in prison? You don't. Verse 31, And when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto the Lord all that was done. Hey, uh, king, you know that guy you forgave the 10,000 talents? Uh, yeah, he grabbed some one of his, his servants and guy owed him a pittance, almost nothing, and he threw him into prison. Ooh. Then his Lord, after that, he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant. See, this is a servant of the king, but he's being called a wicked servant. I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest thou not also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth. He was mad. He was angry. He was PO'd and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Boy, that's some sobering words, isn't it? Oh yeah. That is some sobering words. Oof. So we're supposed to forgive others within reason, not a capital crime, but you know, somebody owes you money, somebody called you a, a fat, stupid head, uh, somebody lies about you, you know, supposed to forgive them. Because I'll guarantee you what we have done against God the Father is worse. You wouldn't believe some of the stupid things I did in high school. I even blasphemed the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, I did. But I wasn't really blaspheming him. I was blaspheming the, the churches that used his name. And I, I think he understood that. But Yeah. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 6. 
I think this is the Sermon on the Mount or Beatitudes or yeah, something like that. Uh, verse 19. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, Christ, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. But it's one thing Jesus did a lot of it was healing people. You know, it's pretty hard to, it was pretty hard for the, uh, those that opposed Jesus to deny his miracles. Now, the, uh, one thing I should point out, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the antichrist, the beast, is going to have the false prophet. And the false prophet is going to be able to do a lot of the same miracles that John the Baptist did. Or, I'm sorry, not John the Baptist. I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Elijah, by bringing fire down from the sky to destroy those that oppose the beast, the Antichrist, the man of sin. But there, I don't there he's going to be able to do miracles. But I suspect that they're not going to be doing healing. I don't believe, yeah, destruction, yes, but healing, I don't think so. I mean, I might be wrong, but that's just my guess. But Jesus did a lot of healing. He cast out devils, healed the sick, healed the lepers, raised the dead to life, gave sight to the blind. I mean, pretty hard to argue that away. So, verse 20, And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Well, I guess, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, compared to some people, I'm not poor, but compared to some people, I'm very poor. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. Did uh, did Billy was Billy Billy Graham was he hated? Was he hated? Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company. Boy, I'll tell you what, when you when I came to the Lord, all my old drinking buddies, they all disappeared. They separated from me. I didn't have to leave them. They left me. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Yeah, that Bob, he's a, you know, he's he's a hater because he hates sin. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Let me tell you something, people. If you want to have a very short lifespan, get called of the Lord into being a prophet. <laughs> Look at John the Baptist. He got his head. He lost his head. And I'm not making light of that either. I, you know. Yeah. Supposedly, Isaiah was. Uh, they put him inside a log and then sawed him in two. I don't know how true that is. The Bible doesn't record that. But according to legends, traditions, whatever. Yeah. You get the idea. But woe unto you that are rich. Boy, you want to be rich in this world? Gold and silver? For they have received your consolation. Well, that's, that's never been a problem with... I've never had that problem, so... Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. I don't have that problem either. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. 
Yeah, when everybody loves you, you got a problem, people. But I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies. Your enemies. Don't love the Lord's enemies. I don't love Satanists. I don't love Luciferians. I don't love them. But those that have wronged me, yeah, I'm supposed to love them. It's not very easy. Trust me. I know. Love your enemies. Don't love God's enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. That's another tough one, huh? And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. That doesn't mean you're supposed to let somebody assault you. Um, you know, and him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. What's a cloak? It's, uh, I guess it's like a cape. You know, you're basically wearing a blanket, right? So if they want to take your cloak, give them your coat too. Give to every man that asketh of thee, out of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would, and as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? Sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye re hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. You know, if God the Father can show us mercy, we should show that same mercy to others. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Now, that's the, I could do an entire series, uh, not a series, but a, a video on, on judging. The Bible says we're supposed to judge righteous judgment not a judging according to our the appearance. Okay? And if you're a smoker, are you going to condemn, judge somebody that drinks? I, You know, that's how I look at it. You know, you're a thief and you're going to condemn somebody because he cheats on his wife? You know, eh, it, that's kind of how I see it. You know, somebody else might disagree, but that's all right, you know. Uh, when I get it all figured out, I'll let you know, but, uh, uh, don't, don't expect it, uh, in this lifetime anyway. So judge not, ye shall not be judged, condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned, forgive, and ye shall be forgiven, forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Wow. Wow. It's not easy for giving, people. Let me tell you something. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You know, when I was in, uh, I moved to Tennessee. Uh, one, reason one was, uh, the mother of my children had uh, got tired of my antics and found herself uh, somebody that did, a, did her a lot better than I did. And uh, I was 
trying to see the kids and everything. And this guy was insanely jealous, didn't want me around her or the kids, and uh, pulled a knife on me. And um, let's just say it's good for him that uh, the Lord said, thou shall not kill. But uh, I figured, well, maybe I should get out of here, you know, because I wasn't seeing the kids and, I, you know, it, it was a bad situation all around. It was all my fault. I mean, she was a wonderful gal and I totally mistreated her. I was good to her probably 99% of the time, but it was that 1%, you know. Rat poison is only 1% or 2% poison. The rest of it's all good food, right? Well, that's what I did. I poisoned things. So I figured I better leave. So I went to Tennessee because I thought there was a good church up there and uh, hurt my back working. The uh, company wouldn't pay me workers' comp. They wouldn't pay me disability. They wouldn't pay me nothing. They were self-insured all the way around. You know, when I asked for disability, they said, well, this is workers' comp. When I asked for workers' comp, they said, well, this is disability. So basically, I was homeless, living inside my old truck that was in bad shape. And... Uh, you think my, the pastor of the church that I went there would ask somebody to give me a, a couch to sleep on in the winter? It was down to 17 degrees sometimes those nights. Nope, nothing. Not one, no, nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I was contributing money to that church. You know? But you know what? Even though I was homeless, I never went hungry. Lord only promised me, well, promises two things, food and raiment, food and clothing. That's it. Doesn't promise us a car, doesn't promise us a nice apartment or a house. But you know, I never went hungry. Never. Didn't go hungry. And I learned a lot. But you know what? When, when I found that uh, churches, when you... You know, they, they love to collect those tithes, but, you know, when you need help, forget about it. Nothing. So, verse 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all shall it be measured to you again. You know, Lord, the Lord taught me a few things so so yeah when uh luckily i wasn't permanently disabled so i guess the lord didn't want me in tennessee and didn't want me working for that company and didn't want me involved with that so-called church so so verse 39 and he jesus spake a parable unto them can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. You know, somebody asked Jesus, uh, Master, where are you staying? He says, Birds have nests and foxes have holes, but the Son of Man hath not where to uh, lay his head. Uh, it's probably pretty close. It's probably paraphrasing a little bit, but yeah, it's pretty close. Jesus was, there was a while when Jesus was homeless, believe it or not. Yeah. So is the servant above his master? No, no, and no. In Luke 17, verse three and four, take heed to yourselves, this is Jesus speaking. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespasses against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt 
forgive him. Oh, yeah. Forgive. Do you know that when Jesus was on the cross, in Luke 23, 34, Jesus, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Of course, he's not talking about the enemy. He's talking about those that were in the synagogue that followed the enemy that was in positions of power. Those that were crucifying him were not all bad people. Some of them were just following the, the, the priests and the, um, the high priest and what have you. Just like our political leaders. You know, people think, oh yeah, so-and-so who got elected, he's, he's going he's gonna to save us. Make America great again. I don't think so. But there are people like that. So, in the book of 1 John, chapter 1, and verse 9, John writes If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's not to say, oh, yeah, I went to Bangkok and, uh, uh, you know, Thailand, where they have a big sex industry. You know, oh, yeah, I went to Bangkok and I was doing a different girl every night for, you know, a month. Uh, that's not confessing your sin. That's bragging. Big difference. Confessing your sin is, yeah, I went... I went there and did a girl and asked the Lord to forgive me and turn away from it. That's, uh, you know, that's what confessing your sin is, saying I was wrong and turning away from wickedness. But there's actually people who will tell you, oh, that's Lordship salvation. You're trying to earn your salvation. Uh so if I'm a hitman for the mafia, I should, uh, because I believe in Jesus, I can keep my job. Because, hey, you know, being a hitman for the mafia pays really good. Well, that's what I've heard. I've, I wouldn't know personally, but that's what I've heard. So, all right, let's go to Luke chapter 7, verse 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him, Jesus, that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. So he's, you know, sitting down, getting ready to have lunch, dinner, whatever. And behold, a woman in the city, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping. She's crying and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. I wonder if she was a, a lady of the night. You know, a, a prostitute? I don't know. Maybe. Verse 40, And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him the most? Simon answered and says, 
I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he, Jesus said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears, washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, Her sins, which are many, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. Wow. I, I, I want to hear those words. Thy, from the mouth of Jesus himself. Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? Well, there's only one that can forgive sins, and that's Christ. That's God. Verse 50, And he said to the woman, Thy faith, thy faith hath saved thee. Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Wow. All right, let's go to math, uh, Mark. Mark. Mark chapter 3. Uh, Jesus is doing a bunch of miracles. Verse 22, And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of devils casteth he out devils. See, Jesus was doing what they call exorcisms. He's casting out devils. The people that were, you could say, demon-possessed. But the scribes, you know, the, the Jewish copyists of the law, they're saying, oh, he's casting out devils by the power of the devil. And he called unto them and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand and if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, Jesus speaking here, Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness. That is some strong language. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Verse 30. Here, why? Verse 30. Because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. They said, they're basically saying, Jesus is possessed of a devil. Jesus is demon possessed, and he's casting out devils by the power of the devil. That's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. There's only one group of people on the face of this earth that commits this unpardonable sin. And that is the group where you preach to them and they just don't hear the gospel. Because they teach this in their 
religious centers. I don't even want to say the word. Uh, let's just say uh, their religious center starts with an S, and then, uh, you know, it could be the sin of Gog, G O G. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. So, in Romans 4 7, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities, what's iniqu iniquity? Sin, wickedness. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. How, how do you cover sins? The blood of Jesus? Yeah. Ephesians 4.32. Yeah, these are sayings of Paul. You know, Paul, that they claim is a false apostle. And be ye kind, be nice, be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, forgiving one another, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. So if we've been forgiven, we should forgive also. 1 John 2.12 I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. And what name is that? Jesus. You know, there's a reason why they don't like the name Jesus. The you-know-who crowd starts with a Y. The Yahuwah crowd. In Acts 5.31, writing of Jesus, it says, Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Oh, yeah. In Ephesians 1.7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the blood of the Lamb, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Colossians 1.14, yeah, does this sound like a false apostle? When you hear people complain about Paul, does this sound like a false apostle? Not to me. Colossians 1.14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. All right, let's go do the final chapter. Let's go to the book of Psalms 103. You know, I've heard people say that the uh, Old Testament is just a book of rules and laws and judgment and, uh, you know, pfft. But I'll tell you what, there is grace and mercy and forgiveness in the Old Testament to those that are in faith. King David, Psalms 103 in verse 1. You know, David was being chased around by King Saul who wanted to kill him. And King David actually had a chance to kill Saul. And he wouldn't do it. He said, I will not touch the Lord's anointed. I'm not sure I would have made the same choice. You know, really. I mean, that was, that's, that, that takes, boy, that takes some real, uh, I don't know what to call it, but can you imagine that? Somebody's running, chasing you all over the country, trying to kill you. And you get a chance to get rid of them for good and you don't do it. I mean, phew. of course, King David was called uh, a man after God's own heart. Did he have his shortcomings? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the little matter with Bathsheba. I'll guarantee you Bathsheba was probably one of the most beautiful women he'd ever seen in his life. And that's what happens when you, and ladies, you know, guys are very visual oriented. You know, we do like to judge a book by its cover. I always heard, uh, I don't remember where I heard it from, but I always heard that uh, judge somebody by the way they treat people who can do nothing for them. You know, 
somebody's being nice to a boss, that's nothing. How do they treat the bum on the side on the street? Are they kind to them? That's who. Uh, that's who you want to. That's who you want to be with. Somebody that's nice to everybody. <laughs> I remember one time I I broken my leg, my ankle in a uh, in an accident. And I'm trying to go back to college. You know, I, I'm basically at, I'm almost ready to graduate. I don't like my last semester or so. It wasn't in the cards. The Lord didn't want me to do that. And uh, I'm, I'm in a cast with crutches. And uh, some girl held the door open for me. And I got through the door and I stopped and I looked at her and said, I should marry you. <laughs> so, yeah, she gave me a smile. But, uh, yeah, I was only halfway joking. But, uh, yeah, I didn't even believe back then. Nope. Lord says, nope, I don't want you to graduate from college. I don't want you to be a computer programmer. I don't want you to work for a business. He had other plans. And I hope I'm fulfilling those plans, but, you know. Psalms 103, a Psalm of David. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who forgives all thine iniquities? The Lord. Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemed thy life from destruction? Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfieth my mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger. Good thing for me, he's slow to anger. <laughs> slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. Good thing for us. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. You know what? We're not getting paid what we deserve. Verse 11. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. You know, our sins separated us from the Lord. But he wants to take our sins from as far from the east as it is from the west. And you know, if God the Father can forgive us and forget our sins and God's not doesn't have Alzheimer's so he wants us to forgive and forget um, and this is not a a rap on you ladies it's not because I'm as guilty as anybody but generally women tend to remember our faults I, uh, you know, and if you forgive somebody, you should tend to forget and not bring them up anymore. Even if you remember them, you should not bring it up anymore. If you forgive, forgive. Don't do that. Remember five years ago when you did this to me, you dirty, you know what? That's not forgiving. That's not forgiving. Come on. And I know it's it's not easy. For as far as the east is from the west, 
so far hath he removed our transgressions or sins from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them. The Lord pities them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. You see, the Lord knows we're fallen flesh. He knows this. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. And his righteousness unto children's children. To such as keep his covenant. And to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his command commandments. I like that. Verse 18. To such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his co commandments, to do them. Jesus basically gave us two commandments, love, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. He said on these two commandments, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You know, and if your neighbor is a Satanist, well, maybe you should move. Well, the Lord had a solution to the Satanists, but uh, we don't do that anymore. There was a time when we did. Verse 19, the Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, Oh, my soul. And with that, we're going to close out this uh, study. So, I hope you learned something. You know, if the Lord can forgive us, we should forgive those that, you know, wrong us. And forget it. You know, forgive and forget. Is it really forgiveness if, you know, you, you keep reminding people of the things that they did? I don't know. I mean, I don't think so, but, you know, what do I know? So, if the Lord can forgive us, we should definitely forgive others. And, like he said, if we don't forgive others, the Lord will not forgive us. Is it easy? No. Absolutely not. But, compared to what I've done, done to the Lord... And to others, uh, it's it's like the guy that it, it's like the king forgave me the ten thousand talents, and then I'm trying to forgive the hundred pence. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.